Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how L'Hopital's rule helps us to evaluate limits. We go through these three examples together, but before we start with our first example, I want to show you when are we allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. What is the case I have to be in? Well, if I want to find the limit of a function and I end up in a scenario where I have a fraction and my numerator approaches infinity and my denominator approaches infinity as well, then I am stuck. I cannot say what my limit is going to be. It can be anything. It could be infinity, it could be zero, it could be any number, we just don't know. But anytime you get to this situation here, you are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. And it also doesn't matter if it is positive infinity here or negative infinity. So any combination of these is okay, and then you are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Another scenario, if you have a fraction and you end up in the, uh, the situation where you have zero over zero. Also not possible to say what the limit is at that point, but you are allowed to use the rule. And another special case would be if you have a product, actually, if you end up in the situation where you have zero times infinity. Also doesn't matter if it is positive infinity or negative infinity, but when you end up in this situation, you are also allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. But these are the only scenarios where this is the case. So don't always apply L'Hopital's rule, that is important, only if you end up in these situations here. Okay, let's start with our first example. We want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this function here. We have a fraction, but before we are allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule, we have to make sure that we are in one of the cases I just showed you. So let's find out. If x approaches infinity, what happens with my numerator here? I have my x in here, so x approaches infinity and gets bigger and bigger. So in total, 2 times x gets bigger and bigger and approaches infinity as well. Okay, my numerator is going to approach infinity. What about my denominator? My x is here, my x approaches infinity, so my x is getting bigger and bigger, so e to the x is getting bigger and bigger and will approach infinity as well. So we are in the case of infinity over infinity, and yes, we are allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. What does the rule tell us now? We want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of this function here. But L'Hopital's rule tells us now we don't have to use this function here. We can write a fraction as well, but instead of these separate functions, we are allowed to differentiate them now. So we take a look at the numerator first and find the derivative of this function. So if we want to differentiate this, we only have an x in here, so the rule is this x will vanish if we find the derivative and only the 2 is left, so this is the derivative of this function here. And then we do the same with the denominator. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. This was L'Hopital's rule, so you can uh, write it down here that you used it. But always make sure that you are allowed to use it. it. It is so amazing, this rule, that you usually use it more often than you are allowed to. So if your uh, limit here would have been 2 um, and here infinity, you are not allowed to apply this rule. Okay, so always make sure that you are in one of the cases I just showed you. But now, we can evaluate this limit here. So what has changed? If x approaches infinity, that never changes. But here in my numerator, there is no x in here now. So nothing changes. My numerator stays a 2, so it will approach 2, not infinity anymore. And here my denominator, well, it didn't change. x still approaches infinity, so e to the x still approaches infinity. But 
the whole thing has changed now because now we actually are in the case that we have 2 over infinity. And what is 2 over infinity, my denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and this whole thing in total approaches 0 then because we have 2 over a huge number and this will approach 0. Okay, L'Hopital's rule, amazing. Let's see if we are allowed to apply it here as well. We have a fraction, which is a good start, but let's see if we are in one of our cases. x approaches 1 this time. So if I take a look at the numerator first, my x here will approach 1, so my thing here at the beginning will be e to the power of 1, which will approach e then, so e to the power of 1 is just e. And then I have e minus e, here is no x in here, what would change anything? So e minus e in total for my numerator that will approach 0 then. Okay, I have 0 in the numerator. What about my denominator? x approaches 1, so my x in here approaches 1, and ln of 1 always equals 0, so my denominator approaches 0. So we are in the case 0 over 0, and yes, we are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule again. So we want to find the limit as x approaches 1, and we are allowed to differentiate these separate functions now. We start with the numerator. If we differentiate e to the x, it stays e to the x, and the minus e here, there is no x in here, so it is a constant and it will vanish if we want to differentiate it, so we don't have to add anything here. What about the denominator? We want to differentiate ln of x. The derivative of this is 1 over x. It is one of the derivatives that you have to have in mind. You don't want to find the proof for it every time all again. So keep it in mind that if, the, if you want to differentiate this, you get 1 over x. Okay, let's see what has changed. x approaches 1. This means here this time my x approaches 1 and my numerator approaches e to the power of 1, so it approaches e. What about my denominator? x approaches 1, so I have 1 over 1 here, which approaches 1. So in total this time I have e over 1, which just equals e, and this is my limit. Let's take a look at the last example. This time we don't have a fraction, but a product. But this doesn't mean that we are not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. We've seen in one of the cases that a product is also fine, but we will see what we have to do here. We want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 plus. What does this little plus here mean? We want to approach 0 from the positive side. So we come from the right side and approach the 0 here from the right side. Not from the left, not from the negative side. We only take a look at the positive numbers and approach 0 then. Okay, but what does this mean for our um, limits here? We start with the x, so as x approaches 0, then our x here approaches 0 as well. Uh, here ln of x, as x approaches 0, what happens with my ln of x? ln of x will approach negative infinity then. Why is that? Well, if we take a look at ln of x, so this looks like this, and if we approach 0 here from the right side, from the positive side here, my function, what happens with my function? It gets smaller, 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 and will approach negative infinity. So that is what we've written down here. So we are in the case of 0 times negative infinity, and we've seen that yes, we are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule in this case, 
but it is very important that we still have a product here and we have to convert this product first into a fraction before we apply L'Hopital's rule. So we've checked that we are allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule, but not yet. Write this as a fraction first, it's important, and then uh, find the derivatives. So we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 plus, and how can we convert this product now into a fraction? For the numerator, you pick one of these two. Usually you pick the more complicated function, so ln of x would be the thing I would write in the numerator. You just leave it as it is. And the other part of your product, the x, we write this now in the denominator. But we are not allowed to just write the x down in here because we would have changed the complete function. But if you want to write something from a product and take it in the denominator, you always have to invert it. So inverting means you make 1 over and then you take your thing, it was an x, you write down the x here. If you want to check that this is correct what we've did here, you can always go this way again. So let's do this. So if we have ln of x and we divide it by 1 over x, we want to see that this is actually where we've came from. Dividing by a fraction means multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So we multiply and then we switch these two, the x goes on top, the 1 goes to the bottom. x over 1 just equals x, so we have ln of x times x, and this is exactly where we've came from. So this is all correct, you can trust me, uh, and you can always write a product as a fraction in this way. We've already checked that we are allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule, so now that we have a fraction, we are going to apply the rule. So, we have the limit as x approaches 0 plus, and now we find the derivatives of our functions. The derivative of ln of x, we already had that, it is 1 over x, just keep that in mind. And then the derivative of 1 over x. This is another function that is worth having in mind that the derivative of this is just negative 1 over x squared. But if you don't have it in mind, then I'm going to show you how you get there. So let's say we call this function here f of x, we call it 1 over over x and we want to find the derivative of this function here. Then I would always write this fraction here in a different way because we have 1 over x to the power of 1 here. You can always write this as x to the power of and now not 1 but we have to make a negative 1 out of this. So every time you want to write a fraction not as a fraction, you can make the, the exponent um, negative. And now this is way easier to find the derivative of this. So f prime of x is then, the rule is that you take your exponent and write it in front, then you multiply it by x to the power of, and then you decrease your exponent by 1. So we have negative 2, right? Because negative 1 minus 1 equals negative 2. And you can use this version here, or what I prefer is to write this thing here again as a fraction, because we have this negative exponent here, we've seen that this is actually a fraction. So we have negative 1 times, and then we want to write this as a fraction, we always have a 1 in the numerator, and we take this thing here in the denominator, but not with negative 2, but we make it positive again. 
and now we have negative 1 times this fraction, which just means it is negative this fraction, so negative 1 over x squared, and this is exactly what we've written down here already. So keep it in mind, then you don't have to go this way every time again. Okay, we applied L'Hopital's rule, and now we can simplify this expression first before um, taking a look at the limit again. So what do we have here? We have 1 over x, so let's write it down, 1 over x divided by negative 1 over x squared. We've just seen that we divide by a fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal. So we switch these two. We write the x squared here and the 1 here. Now let's multiply. The result is going to be negative and our fraction is 1 times x squared, which equals x squared, and x times 1 equals x. We can reduce this fraction here, negative, and x squared over x, we can cancel out one of the x's, so we only have one x left. So this expression here, we can simplify this. We have the limit as x approaches 0 plus, and this thing here equals negative x, so way simpler, and now we can find the limit because x approaches 0 plus, so my x here approaches 0 from the positive numbers, uh, but negative 0 still is 0, so this is my limit, and I hope you know now how to apply L'Hopital's rule. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!